Hi, everybody. Pastor Jason back with you once again for another Wednesday Reflection. As has been my custom from time to time, I come to you once again from another room within Mount Olive Lutheran Church. I'm in our Acts room, or the room that our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders use for Sunday school and for our Logos or Confirmation um, time. And for Logos, I teach the 7th and 8th graders in this room. The reason why I come to you this day from this room is that normally this is where I would be, teaching the 7th and 8th graders the catechism, the scriptures, the joy of, of knowing Jesus and what that means in relationship for them and, and for myself whether it be in school and our families, we talk about a lot of topics and how they connect us to Jesus and the life and light he has given to us and how that life and light that has been given to us is to be shared with others. It's truly a, a joyous time for me to share and to learn and to teach these seventh and eighth graders. Well, I'm by myself this day because Dane County has put together a new executive order which bans all gatherings indoors. Thankfully, we at Mount Olive still have no problems having in-person worship, but that's it right now for almost the next month. It's difficult because, as I've stated in previous reflections, our congregants have been so wonderful in taking care of themselves, not only within our congregation, but of course in our community as well. In over five and a half months of, of in-person worship, we haven't had one person test positive because of being here at church or at any of our gatherings for that matter. And yet, because of the rise of COVID in Dane County and around the state of Wisconsin, as many of you know, even though you're not in Wisconsin, those of you around our country who may be watching this know the numbers have been rising pretty much everywhere. And so our civic leaders thought it was best for the community to to scale back a little bit. It's disappointing because I love seeing the kids. I love teaching them and learning from them as we share so many different things. And yet I thought at least for this night, I could be in the place I usually am, even though it's just you and me this night. And I wish to bring up some words of comfort and peace and, and encouragement once again as we look at a reading towards this upcoming Sunday from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. During this time of year where we start to seek out presence and seek out family, even if they may be limited this year for Thanksgiving, what a glorious thing it is to know that our God seeks us out. Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save the lost. He is the good shepherd. Already back in Ezekiel, hundreds of years before Jesus' birth and life, his death and his resurrection, the people of God were reminded that the true God, the triune God, our God, is one who doesn't just sit back in hopes that we would find him, but the one who seeks us out because he knows in our sinful state we cannot ever find him. It's not within us. The scripture teaches over and over again about our fallen nature, the, the faltering and the failings of our sinful nature. That's why God had to break into our existence through Jesus the Christ to bring that revelation to the world in flesh. Soon and very soon we will be celebrating the advent of our God, Emmanuel, God with us a reminder of what God did. This past Sunday, as some of you have seen, we had a baptism where I always say during a message on that day, God breaking into our existence to take this little life who cannot speak for itself the wonders and the glories of God and yet by his power creates faith. The scriptures teach us that, uh, teach us that and we believe it wholeheartedly because we have a God who can do all things. What a loving God we have that even in our difficulty and our struggles and our rebellions and our anger, that he continues to seek us out. He doesn't give up on us. He doesn't give up on you. What a teaching that is from Ezekiel throughout the Old Testament into the New Testament as well, that our God continues to seek us out so that we might believe. And then following faith continues to seek us out so that we might be drawn closer to him 
the true God who has given us all things, even life everlasting. In a time where so many people need what we have in Jesus, they find other things, they seek out other things that might satisfy. And they might satisfy for a while, maybe an election victory, maybe something in their community, maybe a purchase, maybe a material item in hopes that somehow that by seeking it out, will give us satisfaction and comfort. And they may for a while. But we know we live in a fallen world where the things that we wear, wear out. The things that we drive, corrode and fail us eventually. But not our God. He continues to be with us steadfast, perfect, holy in our lives. That's his promise to you and to me. This God who has sought you out, who continues to seek us out, even in faith, as strong Christians, we can rely upon that good shepherd. Even though we as sheep stray and we go our own way sometimes away from that good shepherd, he promises to always seek us out and to run after us. He never thinks, oh, I've got 99 out of 100, that's good enough. That'll work. He wants all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And for us who believe when we stray, he doesn't say, well, at least I had you for a little while. He wants us for all time. He knows the devil, the world, and our sinful nature is all about pushing us to seek out other things that are not of God. And so he continues as the good shepherd to watch over us, to care for us, to hold on to us so that we might be held, simply held in his arms and in his love. What a reminder in Ezekiel and in so many other places in our scripture that we can rely upon our good shepherd who has sought us out in love so that we might be saved. So for those of you in Dane County, certainly once again, we have to bring things back. It feels like we're back to May and June where all we could do was worship in person and nothing else. But you know what? As some of you have heard me say a few times over the years, it is well with our soul because Christ has a hold of it. He has sought us out. He has bought us with his own blood. And what he has done for us can never be taken away. Nothing in all of creation can separate that which is yours and mine in Jesus. So as I come to you this evening, without my 7th and 8th graders, which does bring me some sadness, You see the cross behind me. We know the cross goes before us as well as that great hymn states. May that continue to be the center of your life. Whether things are constrained and constricted a little bit now, may you never lose hope in the God who gives, the God who has sought you out and continues to seek you out, to search for you so that you might find perfect peace in him. May that perfect peace be yours as we give thanks for the thanksgiving to come and rejoice in all things God has given to you. May that hope and peace and comfort and encouragement be yours today and every day.